Working outdoors is probably one of the best parts about this job is you're outside all day. Now it's not for everyone, but it's better to, for me, it's better than being stuck in an office, just sitting, taking notes. I enjoy the fact that I'm able to, okay, I have uh, this job, this job, and this job. I spoke with this contractor, he's not gonna be out for a while, so I can cluster my tickets for these other jobs, and I'm able to knock out 10, 15 tickets in a day, just waiting, like, just because the one contractor said, okay, yeah, you can do this. Another contractor might not be the happiest with us, but we're still trying to get them the marks that they need. Uh, we're able to be like, okay, you say that you're on site right now, okay, well, I will be there within 30 minutes because I just have to finish up what I'm doing. It allows us just to be like, okay, you need us here, we're, we'll try to get there as fast as possible. You know, our guys are largely unsupervised for the majority of their day. Uh, they schedule their route, um, they perform the job without somebody looking over their shoulder and they have to be incredibly self-disciplined. And, you know, that's a real challenge. The idea that you have to go out and do the job and do it right every day without somebody watching you, because if you don't, there's a chance somebody could get hurt or something could blow up. But maybe 80% of the time, you'll never get that feedback because chances they might not be digging near the facilities. So it's hard to, to stay self-disciplined and, and motivated to do it right. And we talk about different ways to motivate our employees to do that and about safety and about the negative things that can happen if we do the job wrong. But in a lot of ways, it comes down to the individual and it's, it's not a job for everybody. For, for the techs that, it, that enjoy it and it works out well for them and they are self-disciplined and, and they do, they fit with the job well, it can be a great job. And you know, we have employees that really like it that have been locating for 10 years or 15 years and don't have any plans to do anything else. Right now I have to first secure my truck, put throw cones out, make sure that no cars will hit me. And just basic, a basic safety for, uh, to secure the area so we make it our presence a little better known. Uh, this ticket here is actually a uh, sprinkler install. So I know almost 40 degrees, 50 degrees, people are still installing sprinklers, but get it done before the next season, cheaper at the end. And looking at the prints for the electric, uh, the electric all seems to be in the rear. There's a cable replacement for uh, the electric company, so that means there's two primary lines versus the one that's just on the print. So we'd have to locate both primary lines. One might not be energized, but it's still in the ground, so you want to give the companies an idea of it's there's something out there, so if they do find it, they're not surprised or scared. Hey, we found this big we found this big electric line. Why didn't you mark it out? And then pulling up the communications. Uh, there's multiple communication companies that USIC locates for in this area alone. I think we locate five different like communications companies. In total, locates in just my dis my district area is we could have a ticket with up to 10, di uh, 10 different utilities, 11 if sewer and water are broken up. So 11 utilities to locate, it's a lot, but thankfully in the, the area that we're in right today, there's only one. It's the main phone company for most of the US. So at, looking at the prints, now we just get to go uh, knock and announce. Howdy, I'm here to locate for a sprinkler system install. So with this ticket, this is a duplex, uh, but only one address has been called in and it's the south, the northern address. So even though we have another duplex right next to it, we'd only have to mark out the first unit and not the second unit. But with USIC, we have an overmark policy of 25 foot. So because of that, we still have to mark out the entire property making the ticket last a little bit longer than it normally would. These, this kind of thing with an overmark, it's very good for us. I mean, it covers everyone, everyone sees what's going on and we don't want it saying, oh, hey, it's actually both addresses and then the company rips through something that's only five foot off of the address. So pre-marks are great, we love them, but I know it's easier for a contractor to call in for free service, say, hey, entire property, just mark on the curbs, little white lines, but for the locator to make it so that we can get the tickets more on time and more efficiently. 
two, two white dots come out there and say, hey, trees are going right here and here versus two arrows that show, oh no, entire property, want the whole thing, no questions asked. So um, starting March 1st, um, we're going to start locating gas and electric for veteran energy delivery. Um, and so how we've kind of gotten the situation in the spot that we are in, and the opportunity really, um, is that we are going to be energy delivery dedicated locating. Um, so for the southwest region, veteran has electric and gas, so our locators will be tasked to locate electric and gas only. Um, and so what that's going to do is it's going to allow our locators the time that they need for them to be able to perform that quality locate. Um, they're, you know, they're not going to be doing, at any time they're not going to be doing more than just gas and electric. So they don't have to troubleshoot water, they don't have to troubleshoot, you know, any sewer, any of those other things. They're really going to have the time to spend on making sure that the high profile gas and electric is being performed at a high quality rate. So even though we have that contract to locate gas and electric, there's still gonna be two truck rolls. So at one locate, there may be two on the spot utility resources trucks at the same time. But the big difference is one is an energy delivery locator and the other one is basically a production locator. The industry sometimes gets a black eye and you know, you kind of have that not good relationship between contractors and locators and we really have done a very nice job moving that forward with water and sewer and so we're looking to do that with the energy delivery team as well so very excited our company um, started with just brandon and i like i said about 10 years ago almost 11 years ago and then we are currently looking at almost 50 employees well we're excited to have people see what we're capable of we're excited that people recognize that that our approach to quality, that relationship, we're, we're not interested in just providing a service, we're interested in creating relationships with our customers. And um, that's how we grow. And that's, and that's what's instrumental in our business model. We strive to, to appreciate the guys, the guys that are working for us. The boots on the ground, those are the, those are the guys that are doing this, you know? So we've got to treat them right, and we've got to train them properly. We want our guys to feel as important as we believe they are. And so we are trying to foster in a new brand of locator because it's a very important job and they need to know that. They need to be treated as such. And, and if we can do that, if we can get guys that, that want to do a good job for the sake of doing a good job, then, then I think we're gonna be okay. I would say you would have to be a little bit of an outdoorsman to enjoy it. Um, that's definitely why I enjoy it. Um, if you like being outside, you like going hiking, you like seeing just kind of the beauty of what's around you, then it's a job for you, you know. But you have to be able to handle it. You do have to be able to handle those stresses and the rigors of it, that's, that's for sure. I, I'm looking forward to having a career in it. Uh, it's what I'm really looking forward to. There's some, some big breaks coming their way, I feel like, and, and some that we know about. And um, I think as long as we stay quality driven and you know, have a true purpose for learning, a true purpose for quality. I think it's going to continue, and and the career, there's there's careers. I mean, it's it's a career. It's it's something that once you get good at and you and truly enjoy it, you you'll stick with it as long as you can. I mean, look at me. Here I am back again. So and I love it. I'm just glad to be back. <laughs> well, it's just all, that's honest to God true. I, So uh, right now, I'm doing a 360 sweep, uh, about 20 foot out. I'm trying to avoid my ground. Any little kind of blurpy tone that I get, I want to put a dot on because it could be my actual service. And oh, you want to make sure you check your tones and where you're actually at because you could be just bleeding off onto other utilities. Now what I'm doing is I found what I think is the best tone 
for this uh, utility. There's two dots here. This is the first dot I got. This is the actual best dot. My gain was higher. I just marked the first tone I got and then I came back to it to actually do my sweep around this. We always do try to dot going out because we don't know if this is actually our line. This could be a Krauss line. There's, you can see that small little black line coming out in the raceway next to the address I'm hooked onto. And you can see the excavation uh, where they installed it. There's no way that I can unbond it from the electric. So I have to fight against my tone going onto the, uh, uh, the Krauss or the communications line. And I have to try to make sure that I don't pick up on that line. Uh, the way I would tell if I did, and if there wasn't a little line, I would be led to that little uh, gr uh, grayish ped all by itself and not the green secondary right here. This is also why we dot out, because going away from the tone is, gives us a worse tone than uh, going towards it. Now making the assumption that this is in the same trench, there, uh, some locators will do that, but you can never assume that a line is, lines are buried together even if they're close. This line could have been hit and they had, would have had to run a new one. And we just don't know. Uh, thankfully, I have been here and I do know a line was hit. But instead of running a brand new service, they tried to fix it. You can tell by the dots and the lines, they don't perfectly match up. But that's just because the line has had problems. It's been resealed and rebonded. So the tone kind of likes to scatter and go uh, in different spots. So even though I'm pretty sure that these lines are still together, I still have to dot it out and verify that they are. Now, there is a slight difference in my tones. That's because these lines were pulled apart and then put back together by the uh, company that owns them when they were hit. So they're together, but they aren't. So each one of these raceways has three lines going in. And if only one or two of the lines were damaged, they'll repair those one, two li one or two lines. They'll have to pull them apart from each other. And generally they'll leave them apart. So that's why we get tones that are slightly spaced, even though they're very close. Same depth, same everything, but just slightly off because the lines are slightly damaged. On our prints, it shows that there's only one line going in and then it heads south. So hopefully this line is doing what it's supposed to do and heads south. If not, we have to escalate it up to the utility owner and our supervisors and those above them. Still using the lowest frequency, we're still getting a good tone, similar to that that we we're on uh, with the uh, raceways. So we'll, I'll continue, restart the process and do another 360 sweep and hopefully we'll find our tone. So I'm noticing here that there's an exposed line and it looks like it's a communication line on AT&T or something of the, that, that various nature. But with prior experience and past experience, especially we're dealing with the company that's doing the work. This is uh, that is a sprinkler line. It's what controls their entire sprinkler system for this section of the neighborhood. Uh, it happens a lot where there will be someone digging, they'll hit electric and then they'll just up and vanish into the air. From there, we have to escalate it to our other contractors that uh, run the electric utilities saying, hey, we need to get someone out here to check to see if what, what's going on. It's a damage. We don't know who did it or what happened. Hopefully we can find out who did it to put the charge on the right person. If not, it becomes a long game of going in and asking homeowners who was having what work done when. So. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about this line today, but in the past, even at this address, there's been lines that will be exposed and there will be no contractor around to ask who did what. But today's a, a nice day for once. <laughs>
Training is very critical uh, when locating utilities. Uh, it's not just hook up and you get a signal and go. Uh, there's a lot of problems that can occur with signals and utilities crossing each other. So getting the feel for how utilities run and what kind of signals you get is part of training and uh, you're pretty much training every single day that you're out there. For a lot of people that are new to the industry, the, I think the awareness is so low. We don't even know there's so many utilities under the ground. Um, and then I think people don't really ever understand or think about how those utilities get into the ground. You know, some of our guys before they worked here had no idea what a boring machine was. So it's something like that that I think really puts perspective and kind of ties everything in with what we're doing, the construction piece, and then why it's so crucial that we go out there and do a quality locate. Um, so we, we do extensive training. We do training in the classroom, but we also do in, in the field training as well. I think there has to be a good balance, and I think what's um, great about the training is that we, we do that. We, we work with Staking University, and they, they do that training as well. Tell yourself every building has gas, every building has water, every building has sewer, every building has phone, every building has cable TV, every building has electric, and if you leave that site missing one of them, you're setting yourself up. Whether they actually do or not remains to be seen. You look over there, you see a gas meter, it's like, is it worth investigating? Absolutely. You might hook up to it and it goes somewhere else though. Or you look at your print and it shows the main back over there or over there, so maybe there is nothing here. But we wouldn't know unless we talked to somebody. There's something here, we got a peak. There's got to be something here because peak tells us we have current flowing. But the likelihood of it being on what we want, maybe, maybe there is a gas line here, I don't know, but there's something wrong. And if I paint it and I stick flags in it, I'm running the risk. Uh, well, this is a bad news business, generally. If you're getting feedback, it's usually because something bad happened. Uh, but that's not to say we don't get positive feedback, too, because we do. I, I just got feedback from an excavator last week, uh, just telling me what a great job a tech did on a project that they had. It was uh, a two-week rush project that they were, were completing, and we had three employees out there uh, pretty much every day for about two weeks and they got it in on their timeline and he gave me a very nice phone call complimented our employees that were out there just said hey you guys did a great job out here they were really cooperative everything went great we didn't hit anything and and those are nice we don't get those so often when we do we try to celebrate those um, we always give that feedback directly to the employees the technicians or the supervisors who are involved in the job well there was this one time that uh, I had a contractor call me out uh, to uh, locate a, a water main that they had already been out there for weeks putting in the ground. They already had it covered up and they were just uh, pretty much having it get tested to make sure it locates good because it was a PVC main and they had a tracer wire on it. Um, I went out there to go find out what was going on, hooked up in about four or five different spots to find out that the areas that they were going to have to dig back up were actually locatable. It was just one spot that they uh, thought was not going to be able to locate because they couldn't get a signal, but all I had to do was hook up in a couple different spots to find out that that tracer wire actually does locate. So I pretty much saved them a whole day's work of uh, digging that water main back up and uh, fixing that tracer wire just because I went above and beyond and uh, hooked up in different spots to uh, make sure that that tracer wire was active and good to locate. And if you ever lose a signal, that could be a damaged wire, and that has to be fixed so that we can locate that whole entire water main. And that was the issue, was they could not locate that wire, but I ended up locating it from about three different spots, and it saved them a whole day's work from digging. And they offered me lunch because of it. <laughs> you do this job enough, you get enough crazy stories. Like I was saying earlier, uh, it was this time around uh, last year, downpouring, uh, downpouring rain. Uh, I had a water main break in Crete, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's a farm tap that got hit in uh, Route 45 by a semi truck that ran it over. And the semi truck just ran it over, and then they parked. And I'm, Route 45 is a very large highway in uh, Frankfurt, Illinois. And it's like, oh hey. Uh, slightly more important than your water main break in the middle of a small town, like a, sub, a subdivision street. They have a gas main that could potentially blow up a lot of stuff and it was just like, okay, 
I, I had to prioritize, all right, this gas main's a lot more important, uh, a lot more damage can come from that, so went out to that. Uh, luckily, there was another locator. He was driving to a storage unit, and he called me. He's like, hey, Mike, uh, I see you're out there. Do you need help? And he just stopped in his personal truck and threw on a vest and helped me locate the entire time. Now, pulling up to the site here, it's a new construction. We don't have to knock and announce, but there's a lot of things that we do have to worry about as safety concerns. So with every job, when I knocked and announced at the last ticket, I was able to kind of get a good view and walk around. I want to walk around this, this site before I even see anything, before I even think about locating. I want to make sure that my safety is ready. I mean, my first glance is that there's some paint and flags here. I don't know who painted and flagged it. It could be just some kid with some paint or the flags could have been moved by some random contractor pushing gravel around. There's active construction, so we don't know. And as I walk back here, I see that there's more flags. I see old paint and flags, and yet again, I don't trust it. It wasn't me that painted it out. It looks like it's been through a few uh, wash cycles, so I, it could just be anyone. It could be someone pre-marking, and they pre-marked in orange and red. So when we see old stuff that looks older than a few days, you might want to call and make sure because this ticket here calls for entire rear and sides. I only see lines that go right up to the edge. With this ground, yeah, I can see that that's pro this is probably going to be my electric. But like I said before, we, we can't really trust those flags. From where my dots are at to where that flag is at, that's over 24 inches. And 24 inches in our books is, oh, well, I mean, we would be at fault for trying to follow that. We have 18 inches here. So just it, we see this trench, we see that nice, it kind of lines up nicely. No, it doesn't. It, someone just threw a flag there because they could. We always want to make sure that what we're, we're doing is right and taking the time to make sure that it's, it's 100%. And you can see, they just kind of put the line wherever, the, flag, the extra flags wherever they wanted to. They weren't really caring about the distance to them, they're only just putting it there as a kind of as a reminder that the house has a new line, don't hit it. They don't paint it, they just throw some flags on it. But that's why we're here. Well, locating, yes, it, we're getting paid to locate, but for us, locating is, is, a, is essentially safety. Uh, if we do our job in a safe manner and the correct manner, we're able to make sure that everyone else can do their job and go home safe to their families. I want to make it so that I go home safe to my family and so that any contractor that's doing digging and work goes home safe to theirs. We're trying to just make it so everyone can work and earn an honest wage and go home. We don't want it so it's us versus them or that guy did this and this, this locator did that 10 years ago. Most, for the most part, most of these locators that did wrongdoings are gone. And most of the contractors that have done wrong, well, they can't really stay in business for too much longer. So we just try to work together and try to make it so that we can bring everyone home safe at the end of the night. I'd rather not have to have that on my conscience that I did something irresponsible or stupid and it caused someone to get hurt or die. And I know contractors want to go home to their families so that's, I just, that's the big thing about locating. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of he said, she said, and blaming, but we're not trying to point the figure, finger at saying, you were wrong, you did this, you did that. No, it's, you just have to work together. And I know it's not a commonly held practice, but hopefully that can change sooner or later because we're gonna be here for a while and everyone does need to get together and put their boots on and just keep on working on it. The biggest problem nowadays, I think, with locating in general, um, doesn't matter who the vendor is, doesn't matter who you're calling in to get those locates from. You know, the city of Chicago is a very old city, you know, and a lot of these locators are basing their not only their locates, but the locations of, you know, where these utilities may be, and they're basing that off old maps. And if we got old maps that were drawn up in the early 1900s, um, you know, we've got a lot of things that change between then and now. And then we've also got the fact that a lot of times these new utilities are being put in and they're not being documented. And that's the same case, it, it, the same rule applies. If they're not being documented, how are these locators able to come out here and properly locate? Number one, if they don't know what's in the grounds, or number two, there's no maps or no identification purposes. 
in order to find those locates. And if we can't find those, we're just gonna have to try to uh, continue to get better, continue to try to locate these lines, continue to update maps, continue to make calls. When we come across something that's not necessarily marked or not necessarily in the maps, we have to make the proper calls. We have to make sure that those are being identified and they are being put into the maps. So when the next crew comes along, that's in there. That information is available and we're gonna keep people safe. We have had issues where things have been mismarked. Obviously, when you get into larger scale companies for these locates, they have a lot going on. I kind of give them the benefit of a doubt. They're covering a large area. They have a lot to do. I mean, I'm sure these locators are working overtime, you know, so it's hard for everybody to coordinate with these prints to see what's going where. Stuff obviously gets missed in the city. You know, people will just leave old stuff that's not live anymore. They don't know if there's stuff in there still. You know, it's hard for everybody to kind of be on the same page, but some of the smaller companies that are starting to come up, I think they're doing a better job because it's a smaller force and they're more committed to certain areas where they're able to kind of keep a better job with the prints and kind of everything that's going on in the area. So we avoid hitting things in the future, you know? I think too that when you see utility members and owners taking pride in the product that they're delivering to their customers, we're an extension of that. And so it's nice when we get done with our daily workload and we go home to our families and nothing is on the TV. So it's a breath of fresh air to see customers starting to realize that that quality variable is so critical to not only safety, but their customers as a whole. The more cooperation that we can get in the in the in the field between excavators and locators and the utility companies, the the better performance we're going to have. Uh, really, you know, communication and information is what we do. I don't know that you ever get to a point where we're a hundred percent no damages ever. There's always going to be excavators that are in a hurry or not paying attention, and there's always going to be locators who are unfocused or unengaged that make mistakes. There's really no way to entirely prevent that. We can just try to continually work to get better.